Welcome to Off-Grid Contracting, and in this video today, I am very excited to share with you uh, one of the projects that I would just consider a labor of love. Now, a lot of people have questions about ground mount, um, and a lot of people have questions about off-grid and what's all the combinations we can do. This system has four redundancies with utility, generator, generator only standby for utility, and the uh, off-grid was gone. Uh, I got so many backups for that, I can't wait to share it with you. But the first thing I want to share with you is this array. I think this is a 7.2, 7.4 kW um, that we put out. And you can see their block ballast ground mounted and then landscape. We done this as the landscape on no additional charge to the customer. If you want to step right here and take a look, you can see that we have this wire mesh that we also installed on the back side of the panels and the block. And this is to keep not only wildlife critters and everything else from getting up under the panels and the array, but also this lets our flow come and go beneath the panels, but it also keeps debris from getting in the panels as well. And so a lot of people have questions, you know, what does a ground mount block ballast array look like? And this is what it looks like right here. And a lot of people may laugh at this, but here's the thing, is that this type of setup right here is one of the most affordable setups one of the most easiest to clean and maintain that there is out there on the market. Um, it's a very simple setup. Uh, brackets, a block, landscape, and call it a day. So with that said, now I'm gonna go to another spot here. We're gonna show you the electrical connections and I'll show you the battery room. We'll take it from there. Okay guys, so what we have here to begin with, we have a propane power generator. This was originally installed on the home, okay? Now what we done with, in partnership with Thompson Electric, um, and uh, thank the guys over at Hurricane Wind Power for all the help with getting the parts for this system. What we done, we added a 400 amp manual transfer switch. This allows the system to be off grid, backed up by generator input, by utility input, or in the event that the off grid's completely gone and the utility company's gone, they can still pull back up into this position and have the generator service still service this home. Not only that, but in the event that the utility company's gone, say in the middle of winter, they can pull the handle up and buy some settings that we set on the system, they can actually speed charge their batteries as well. So they've got like quadruple redundancy. It's just the most redundancy I've ever seen built into a system that we've done. Um, but this is all electrical, uh, neatly ran together. Like I said, uh, partnership with Thompson Electric Service. Um, Jeff does an amazing job. If you're in Tennessee, you need a good electrician, definitely hit him up. Get the information in the video description below. Um, but guys, one of the important things you gotta understand is with this sit top system, is this is not just a normal setup input. This is a 400 amp capability for this home because they have two 200 amp service panels. So we're putting in about 100 amp service either via the generator or by the off grid uh, inverter. So if you wanna step in here, What we have here is the inverters. Right now they're using off the off-grid. We've got this set so that the customer uses as much capability off-grid and then it swaps back and forth between the utility company so that they're eating as much off their utility bill as possible. We've got two Midnight Classic charge control systems. Uh, it's off-the-grid OTG boards that we uh, designed at Off-Grid Contracting. It was the first to ever come out with that layout. Here is the battery bank. Um, as you can see here, set up, uh, we've got to clean up the coating a little bit. We coated these again today uh, just to make sure to protect them. Uh, right here, we have the Honeywell temp control that will actually turn on the stink fan, pull the heat out of here in case these units ever get hot, cool to the touch, just barely have any warmth to it at all. They've been running now for a week. Customers had no hiccups at all. Over here, we have the 400 amp input service coming in. Okay. Then over here is the output distribution uh, from the off-grid. And here is the generator capability. Now I want to talk about the generator capability for a minute. Is what's really neat about this is we have this set so that the customer can swap AC1, which is the utility input to the off-grid inverters. They can swap that to AC2 at any given time they want. And then at that point in conjuncture, they can charge the battery bank via the generator, via sending it through the, the, the off-grid system. And if they want to, they can still pull the switch up, run the whole house off-grid in the time being, and charge the battery bank off the generator while we're still having full service of the house via the generator. So guys, I'm gonna step back outside for just a second here and show you. 
the last point I want to make on this system, um, and it's something that a lot of people just don't understand when going off grid, is redundancy is everything. Uh, you can have the most biggest, baddest battery bank in the world, and if you have a week of cloud cover and no power, that battery bank's just as dead as if you had a small battery bank. Having a generator, having some kind of supplemental source, having multiple off-grid inputs, whether it's photovoltaic modules, wind power, hydroelectric, it's always good to have as much redundancy on power production as possible, but not only that, to also have backup power. This home has four redundancies. Out of the seven years in the field working for clients, I've only seen this happen maybe two, three times at the most. This is a very rare occasion. Something that can be learned from. And not only this, but this right here was like a $3,000 part. We found it for half the cost of the normal, which is about six grand. Had this not been an issue and a few other things, this customer's project total, I think come to, and somewhere in the $30,000 range, uh, I, may, I may be pushing that even more than it actually cost, but, it was extremely affordable. And the last comment that I would make to you guys is something I've learned in 2020 during the year of Corona, uh, during all the stuff that's went on, is that we recently worked for a customer that they were gonna charge them $100,000 just to move material from the boat dock to their island. We showed up there, we loaded it up on their boat, hauled it over and didn't charge them one dime to do that. You know, there's a lot of people out there that just wanna get your money nowadays when you're going off grid. So. Whether you choose to use us or not, be careful and be wise out there who you have to work for you. Guys, this has been working for a week for these people. We've got hundreds of projects behind us over years, going on a decade almost now, working for people. We enjoy doing this. We try to deliver the very best to you every time on time. And so guys, if you're looking forward to going off grid, make sure to check us out at offgridcontracting.com. And until we see you again, look forward to working for you.